The third normal form has the advantage that the transformation preserves all functional dependencies. So what we've seen on the last slide, that the functional dependency gets lost, does not happen with the transformation to third normal form. Also for the third normal form, we are not going to arbitrarily split tables, but we are going to use a synthesis algorithm that results in a particularly nice third normal form. So the synthesis algorithm shown on this slide produces a lossless decomposition of a relation into third normal form that additionally preserves all the functional dependencies. The input of the synthesis algorithm is again a relation R and a set of functional dependencies for R. The first step is the same as for the Boyce-Codd normal form. We compute a canonical set of functional dependencies. The second step is different, because now we are not maximizing the right-hand sides, but we are simply merging function dependencies that have the same left-hand side. So we will merge the function dependencies with the same left-hand side, but we are not going to maximize the right-hand sides in the sense that we take all the attributes in the cover. So whenever we have function dependencies alpha uniquely determines beta 1, and the same left-hand side alpha uniquely determines beta 2, so this can all be sets of attributes, then we'll replace these two functional dependencies by a single functional dependency, alpha uniquely determines beta 1, union beta 2. Next, we are going to create one relation, one table for each functional dependency. So for every functional dependency, alpha uniquely determines beta, we create one table with the attributes of this functional dependency. So with the attributes alpha, union, beta. And next, we have two final checks. Namely, first we check whether one of the tables that we've created contains a key of the original relation R. If none of the tables contains a key of the original relation R, then we add a new table with the attributes of a minimal key of R. And finally, we drop all tables that are subsumed by other tables. So if we have a table Ri with attributes alpha and a table Rj with attributes beta, such that alpha is a subset of beta, so then the table Ri is fully subsumed in the table rj, then we drop the table ri. So let's try the third normal form synthesis algorithm on an example. We have a table r with attributes a, b, c, d, e, f. And we have a number of functional dependencies for this relation. Now the first step is that we compute a canonical set of function dependencies. And again, we are lucky because this is already a canonical set. The next step is that we merge function dependencies with the same left-hand side. In this example, there's only two function dependencies with the same left-hand side, namely B uniquely determines C and B uniquely determines D. So we merge these two into one function dependency B uniquely determines C and D. Observe that we do not maximize the right-hand sides. So we did not add E to this function dependency on the right, although it is in the cover of A. And we also did not e add E here on this function dependency on the right, although it is in the cover also of B. So we simply merge functional dependencies with the same left-hand side, but we do not maximize the right-hand sides. Next, we will create one relation for each functional dependency. So that's a very simple step. We have functional dependency A, D. We create a relation with the attributes A and D. We have functional dependency B uniquely determines C, D. So we create a relation with attributes B, C, D. And we have functional dependency D uniquely determines E. So we create a table with the attributes DE. And we're almost done. 
Now we just have to do the two final checks. We have to check whether there is a table that contains a key of the original relation R. The first table R1 has attributes AD, and if we take AD together and we compute the cover, we get E, but it's not a key of the entire table. If we take BCD together and we compute the cover of BCD, we also get E, but it's not a key of the original table. Also DE together, if we compute the cover, we only get DE. It's also not a key of the original table. So the question is, what is a minimal key of the original table? We are just interested in one minimal key. So let's have a look. First, we know that the minimal key needs to contain all the attributes that do not appear on any right-hand side. A does not appear on any right-hand side, so A must be in the minimal key. B does not appear on any right-hand side, so B must be in the minimal key. C does appear, D does appear, E does appear, F does not appear on any right-hand side, so also F needs to be part of a minimal key. Okay, so we know that A, B, and F need to be in a minimal key. Let's compute the cover of A, B, and F. From B we get C, we get also D, we get also E. So we get everything because we already have A, B, and F. So A, B, F is a minimal key for the original relation. So we add a new relation containing this minimal key, namely the attributes A, B, and F. So we have a force relation with the attributes A, B, and F. Now, finally, we check whether one of the relations is subsumed by another. So whether the set of attributes of one of the relations is a subset of the set of attributes of another relation. A, D is not a subset of this, is not a subset of this, is also not a subset of this. B, C, D is not a subset, is not a subset, also not a subset. D, E not a subset of AD, it's not a subset of BCD, it's also not a subset of ABF, and ABF is not a subset of any of them, because otherwise we would not have added this additional relation. So none of these relations subsumes another, so we are done, this is the final result, this is our third normal form. Let's practice the transformation to third normal form. We have a relation with attributes a, b, c, d, e, f, g, and we are given a set of function dependencies. The first step in the transformation to the third normal form is the computation of a canonical set of function dependencies. Luckily, this step has already been done for us. We are already given a canonical set. So let's Write this up a bit nicer. Okay, we order this a bit to make it better readable. Okay. Now the second step is to merge functional dependencies that have the same left hand side. For A, we have only one function dependency with left hand side A. For B, we have two, so we merge these two, so we get D and F on the right. For D, we also have two function dependencies, we merge these two, we get A, B on the right. For the left hand side A, F, we have only one function dependency. For the left hand side F, G, we have again two, we merge these two, and we get A, C. So this step is different from the transformation to boyce cot normal form. In the boyce cot normal form, we have maximized right-hand sides. We have taken on the right-hand side the cover of the left-hand side minus the attributes of the left. Here, we do not maximize the right-hand sides. We only merge function dependencies with the same left-hand side. Okay, so these are our function dependencies. Now, from these function dependencies, we are going to create relations. 
So we are making a relation that contains the attributes of the first functional dependency. Let's call this R1. We are going to create a relation R2 with the attributes of the second functional dependency, R3 with the attributes of the third functional dependency, R4 with the attributes of the fourth, and R5 with the attributes of the fifth functional dependency. Okay. Now, there's two checks left that we have to do. Namely, we have to check whether one of the relations that we've created contains a minimal key of the original relation. If not, we have to add one more relation containing the minimal key. So let's have a look. We have already given the minimal keys. DE is a minimal key. So do we have a relation that contains DE? Here we have D, but we don't have E. Here we have D, we don't have E. So actually we don't have in any of the relations, in none of the relations we have E. If I see it correctly, yes, in none of the relations we have E. Okay. So DE does not appear anywhere, so also BE does not appear anywhere, also AEF does not, and EFG also not. None of these keys appears in these relations, because we don't have E in these relations. So we have to pick one of these minimal keys and create a new relation from it. So I will just pick the first one, DE, and I'll make a new relation, R6 with attributes D and E. Okay, so now we have added a new relation with the with a minimal key from the original relation. There's one more step left, namely we have to now check whether one of the tables that we've created is subsumed by another table. So whether the attributes of one of the tables are a subset of the attributes of another table. So let's have a look. Do we have somewhere the attributes AG as a subset? Not here, not here, because there's no G, here's no G. Here we have AG. So the relation R5 subsumes the relation R1. The schema of R1 is fully contained in R5. That means we don't need R1 we have to throw it away. We have BDF, is BDF subset of one of them? So surely not of this, not of this, and also not of this. So this is not a subset of any. DAB, not a subset of this, not a subset of this, not of this, not of none. AFB, we have AF, but we don't have B here, not of this, and not of the others. Here we have four elements, clearly not subset, and the E is not a subset, otherwise we wouldn't have added it. Okay, so this should be it. This should be our third normal form. Yeah. We've seen that the transformation to boys cot normal form sometimes loses functional dependencies. The transformation to third normal form preserves all functional dependencies, and therefore the third normal form is popular in industrial practice. Database management systems are strong in enforcing key constraints because they build an index on the key columns. If we leave a table in third normal form and not in voice code normal form, then we have non-key constraints, namely those function dependencies that are not implied by a key. And the question is, how do we enforce these non-key constraints? In some database management systems, these function dependencies that are not implied by keys can be enforced using materialized use.